Okay, I gotta take care of this ceiling here. And uh, kind of washed it a couple times. Uh, got some staining on the edges, but it's not mold. Because I washed it with 50 50 solution of bleach and water. And uh, I'm gonna paint over that with something. Okay, I'm going to use this, uh, the Kilt's Original Primer Sealer Stain Blocker. It says it blocks heavy-duty stains and it's interior oil-based, which I had read that it's better using oil-based to uh, seal like water stains and stuff like that in a shower because it just covers better and seals better than a water-based uh, kind of primer. So this is what I'm going to use. And before I paint, I gotta take care of that there. That is the edge. It doesn't look too good. So I got some spackles, so today I gotta tackle the spackle, or tackle the spackling. Yeah, this is stuff I'm gonna use. Let's give it a try. Yeah, I'm gonna try applying it with a stick technique, and then smooth it with a finger technique. So that's what I'm doing here. Get it on the messed up areas. And then we're gonna smooth it with my finger. You know, you know kind of like that. Then I gotta put the camera down, but that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, actually, just using the stick worked pretty good. Just filled it in and just did it with the stick. And then uh, you got some extra on there. Just kind of wipe it a little. But what I'm going to do there is, uh, right here, is uh, let it dry and do a little light sanding, like maybe 200 grit or something, and then just um, hit again if I have to. But it looks pretty good, worked pretty good. And this stuff turns white after it dries. So it goes on pink and dries white. Okay, I took the, uh, the lens here out of the light. It's all dirty in there. Like dead stuff in there. And it looks like some retard designed this because uh uses like these springs or something to hold it in there. It goes in the hole, so hopefully it's easier to put in than to take out, but I kinda doubt that. And I got more uh more plastic around here, protect the tile. I'm gonna put some on the floor down here. And this, uh, this stuff turned white up there, so I could lightly sand it now. Yeah, I got this thing from uh, 3M, so it's extra fine. Give, give that a try. Just basically, uh, go real light on it. Get it smooth. Over here, I put some over here. It's real light, take it easy. Dab a little bit more on there on my finger because it was um, still had like an indentation in there. So basically, I kind of filled it in and let it dry. I'm going to sand the light again. Just keep doing it until I get it perfectly smooth. Yeah, when that spackle's dry, I just found some more plastic and uh, put it on the floor here. So this looks uh, pretty good. Let's see, maybe fix it a little over there so it doesn't drip on there. But uh, I think it's sealed pretty good around here. Alright, I got it looking pretty good. Now I'm going to paint it with the, uh, the stuff I got. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to have ventilation here. I got a fan going and I got a brush and put some gloves on because oil based paint, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard to clean up. You need like a paint thinner or something to clean, mineral spirits to clean up. So, I gotta get going. Oh boy, how do I get into this kind of pickle doing stuff like this? The cover's okay. I mean, it's not great, but it covers okay. 
and just take it easy and just get it get her done get her done well I got a good brush here it actually says good and I'm gonna put another coat of paint on the top there you can see how the brush took saying exactly even on there because you know it's soaking in and this um, kilts doesn't really cover as good as probably I thought it would but it needs another coat so I got a better brush let's see where is it here it is right here and it's called a good brush I guess they got even better ones and this looks pretty good better than what I got I'm gonna give it another coat yeah yeah that's, that's a picture of the wife there no I'm just kidding but she looks like that though anyway pow yeah that's um that's Sylvania that that light bulb is the Sylvania light bulb and it's funny looking it's tapered on the top anyway that bulb is in there for 30 years 30 years folks and it's used you know, used every day I mean practically I mean the wife goes in there turns the turns the switch on air on that wall and she takes a shower I and mean, I'm talking 30 years now watch it blow out tomorrow but I'm gonna leave it in there maybe it's good for another 30 years now you show me one of them newfangled fluorescent or LED light bulbs last 30 years. Ain't gonna happen. Anyway, I found out that I'm just gonna turn the light out because I can see where it didn't cover good with the light out better. See, watch when I move the camera. See the streaks where it didn't cover good? Well, I can see better because um, with the light out because the light lights everything up too much, too bright. And besides, it kind of kills my eyes anyway. So I'm gonna try it without. Looks like I got some stuff on the lens here. And clean that off. Yeah, this is really an educational experience for me because here comes the brush. I never really done this before. But you could tell when it's getting dry because you could Hear the brush. Get a little more paint on here. Paint's down here. I should put it in some other kind of container. But, just how I'm doing it. I'm not a professional painter. You probably figured that out already. Okay, it's just a second coat here. Here's the brush here. It's going across. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Think happy thoughts when you do this. Just like the guy used to say, Bob. Bob used to say that on PBS. Think good thoughts. Take your time. Everything's going to come out good. Okay, I gave it a second coat and I'm going to stand back and look at it. And you're not going to know until it dries. So I gotta see what it looks like when it dries. Yeah, what are we gonna do? All I gotta do is take that little brush and put a little paint right, right in like those cracks there, you know? Well, that didn't work too good, so I'm gonna try this sponge, get a little paint on there, get it into that crack up over there. Zoom in on that. Like them cracks with the sponge thing. The sponge method, that might work sponge method is working I can't get everything you just got to keep working at it I'm just showing this in case someone has to do it but it seems to work just kind of dab the sponge I'm telling you it's a lot of work though you know I still can't get it all without sponge so I'm gonna have to get like a really super small brush and get it in that that edge you see it's like the edge of that of that um, sheetrock and there's like a metal piece in there and the wallpaper's coming down 
and I got a little, a little extra paint on there I gotta clean up. Well, that's what it needs, like a little teeny 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 tiny model brush to get in there. What a drag. Okay, I got it all painted. Three coats of um, kilts, oil-based um, primer and sealer. And I'm not going to paint, paint it. And i tell you why. Because originally that was not painted. It was just primer on there. And that held up good for 30 years. Just primer. And it's white. So why paint it? I mean, why, why risk paint peeling off the primer? So it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with it. It, three, it needed three coats though, and I went back to the original brush because the original brush was thicker. So um, I got to put the light back. So I cleaned it all up here. I cleaned like the bugs and whatnot. And I had a seal on here, and that seal just deteriorated. So I want to put some like silicone around here, let it dry, and then that will like seal it from moisture getting in there. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, this light bulb here, I didn't see it, but the wife looked at it. She said, that's a Sylvania halogen light. Pow. And uh, that's been in there uh, since like the house, like 1982. So, I mean, it's a good light bulb. I, I'm not even gonna touch it or anything. So, Anyway, it's all good, so I'm going to put it together. Yeah, and i got to get my magnifying glass, because it says here, like, something like how you're supposed to put it together. It has these dopey wires or something that clip in there. Kind of lame, but I guess it works. It has some uh, leftover RTV from uh, the guy. I broke the tip off of there. This is the shower guy left. He had like about two inches left in there. Now I'm just smearing it on here, around here. And that's going to be the seal so water don't get, water vapor don't get into there. Okay. I think the little hooks here help guide those wires, I think. Could be wrong. Who knows? Yeah, these wires here, see how they, they squeeze? I don't know. Yeah, like that. You see that wire is the guide in there? I think I got lucky. I think it's going to work. I had the same thing on that side, too. Then I put the uh, a thin layer, like for a gasket, of the RTV. And we just shove this whole thing back up. Oh, come on. For the piece de resistance. The piece de resistance. Get in there. It's almost totally flush with the ceiling, but it's pretty close. Like shove it in, and it wants to drop. It wants to drop another little. It's almost in all the way. Well, that's the best it's gonna get. Because it fits tight. It fits tight there. About a thirty second of an inch there. <clears throat> get in there. I think that's it. Okay, I pulled the lamp back down, and then I slammed it up, and it seemed to go in tighter. So that's about as tight as it's going to get. Because it's just the wires holding it. It looks good. And I can take the ladder out, and the wife can use the shower. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, I put in a nice new towel rack. I used the level to level that. And then here I um, I put that into the stud, and this side uses that came with it some kind of uh, you know thing that goes in the wall and you tighten it, and it tightens against the back of the sheetrock. 
So that size into the to the stud itself. So that's cool. Then I did the same thing on this side. Put that towel rock in. Then I leveled it and let's see this side that side went into the stud. On this side I did that kind of hanger thing for the sheetrock. That's that's in good. And I also did uh, the new toilet thing. And that all goes into the sheetrock with those tightening things that you tighten up. But all these match, they're, they're all coordinated, see? They look like uh, salt shakers or something. There you see. And then, match like these uh, faucet things here. That kind of matches like things for the tub. So everything's kind of coordinated. And I'm telling you, that this, um, this was uh, mowing, mowing stuff. And it wasn't that bad. Like for instance, like the towel rack here was about twenty bucks, you know, for the towel rack. But I'm saying is like it's good matching the things up. You know, you see you match this part, and then that matches with um you know, like the faucets here. And the Moen is like a cheaper brand, but when you match everything up, it kind of makes it look classy, you know. So it's not like you're spending like a lot of money because everything's like coordinated and people say, hey man, it's coordinated, that looks pretty good. So that's what you do, you know? And uh, see the floss in there, that, that's like a mowing too. You know, and, and I think the head was too and that thing over there. So, you know, it's all good. So, hey, the wife can use this to take a shower tomorrow. And, uh, she'd be happy. I mean, she was taking a shower using the other shower in the house. I'm not saying, you know, if she hasn't taken a shower in like four months, that would be pretty bad. But she's good to use the, to the, use the shower tomorrow. Is that great? Take it easy, YouTube friends. Bye.